We were working on this strategic planning document for Larry Summers and um, how could we leverage the ed school to have a greater impact on public education. And um, Jim Stiles said we should be partnering more with the business school. We were already doing a program called HELP with them, the Public Education Leadership Project. And at first we, you know, the team kind of rejected it. We thought it's, it's just going to be too hard to do. It's impossible. They won't want to play with us, kind of. And the next time we met, I was like, you know, what about the, we should be working with the Kennedy School too, because if you want to be an education leader, you have to know about schools and learning. You have to know about politics and policy making. You have to know about leadership and how to run an organization. So those three schools really fit together to make an education leader. And we started brainstorming. It could be like a JD in law, right? A, a doctorate, but a practice doctorate, mm -hmm. right? Why are we making people who want to be superintendents write dissertations? Does that make any sense? No, it really doesn't. And on and on and on. Uh, I should look back at what we wrote, but what we wrote about this new degree, I don't think we called, we didn't call it the EDLD, whatever we called it. It certainly um, grew once the faculty got a hold of the idea. So thinking about the EDLD, how did you finally convince the Kennedy School and the Business School to partner with us? One of the decisions we made, and I don't think we knew at the time how important it was, but we, we decided to do some market research. Like, if we build it, will they come? And we hired the Parthenon Group right here. And um, they did qualitative and quantitative research and produced um, a wonderful document. And that document, I don't think the business school or the Kennedy School um, would have joined with us without knowing that, without these data. Okay. But the other thing that we hadn't predicted is that uh, these data were really important for fundraising, too. So let's say you're meeting with some, you know, Harvard Business School alum um, and trying to interest him or her in the EDLD. Being able to show this market research um, was very convincing that this was a, like a real thing and that it would recruit the right kind of students. I don't know if you know this, but Bob Herbert, who was a New York Times columnist, ended up writing an op-ed about the EDLD. Hey, Harvard's got a an answer to whatever, and the leadership <laughs> deficit, a whole column about it, and um, it was in December. We were we got more than 500 applications for 25 slots, yes. and we were off and running. Yes. So what did you expect that the graduates of this program would be doing in 2020 or even 2040? Yeah, I think we hoped a couple things. One is that um, certainly that they would be running districts and maybe that several of them would be clustered in districts so you'd have enough like-minded people to really make a change because you probably know the average superintendent doesn't last very long but what if the whole team was kind of like-minded we also hoped that some of them would start innovative education organizations new kinds of charter schools that certainly has happened and we we talked about a network that they would get together and my understanding is that happens too. There's it does. like an annual conference. So the people would be sharing best practices, but also helping one another, hiring one another, right? Right. We wanted the people with the EDLD to really be working hard at policy and practice. And I understand we have two EDLD deers who are secretaries of education. We do. We two, do. Two out of 50 <laughs> states have EDLD deers, and, and the program is only in its 10th yes. year. We've just begun. That's phenomenal. Absolutely.